Hello everybody! Today we're going to be writing some orchestral music in Ableton Live 11. Yeah! Um, and I will be showing you how to build a template. I've made a template. It's actually a really surprisingly easy program to build templates of any kind, orchestral or otherwise, in. And I'll show you what I've done with that. Um, and you'll be able to download this template. I'm working today in um, with BBC um, Spitfire Discover. Um, so that um, it's a nice, free, um, interesting uh, orchestral library. So the whole idea is you can download my Ableton project, dive, download um, BBC uh, Spitfire Discover, and play the whole thing back, and you'll have an orchestral template and it'll all be great. So if you're an Ableton user already, and you th never thought of doing sort of orchestral stuff, Welcome aboard! Welcome to our world! Um, but as I say, this isn't really all uh, just about orchestral composition, it's about me getting to grips with working in Ableton. And so along the way, we're going to be, you know, I'll be passing on some experience I've had about moving from one door to another. This isn't a permanent move to Ableton, but I, you know, I, what I'm saying is, um, Every time I learn a new door, because I've gone from Cubase, I've done some logic, and now I'm doing some Ableton and some other bits, um, I learn more and more about the whole process of moving from one door to another. It's not as horrifying as you might think. Um, and anyway, we'll come to all that. Shall I introduce you to my Ableton project? I will, after I just remind you that Think Space Education is a great place to come and learn about music. Whether you want to learn about mixing, or you want to learn about writing video game music, or harmony, or anything else, we have an absolute plethora of wonderful courses which are super affordable and really, really effective and fun. They come with interactivity and Discord channels, and check it out, thinkspaceeducation.com. Right, where were we? Oh yes, hello and welcome to my template. Right, look, um, the stuff which I found really surprisingly easy, let me just create an extra track under here. Look, because what we've got going up in the top right hand corner here is some uh, little group tracks and folders inside which there's all the uh, woodwinds. And the way I organize a template, we go uh, each instrument in score order. This is the way you'd see it on a full orchestral score. So I have one long and one short. So piccolo long, piccolo short, flute long, flute short, oboe, etc., etc., And woodwinds at the top, then brass, horns, trumpets, trombones, and tuba. Then we have the percussion, timpani, um, perk, and tune percussion, like glockenspiel and xylophone and things like that. Um, some misc, uh, that's harp and celesta. Uh, and then the strings, again in score order, violin, um, one, two, viola, cello, and bass. And then I've created some stems, which are audio tracks, um, to which each of these separate sections is rooted. So if you want to um, bounce out a stem, in other words, you want an audio file of all the woodwind, all the brass, all the that, you just record it, bonk, like that, and it does it. Um, the interesting thing with this is down here you can see all the reverbs. Each stem needs its own reverb, otherwise all the reverb gets all mushed up and that doesn't work at all well. And the final thing is all this lot gets rooted into um, the stereo channel, which is here. Right, let me first of all show you just the very, very quickly how we um, add um, tracks to this, because it's pretty simple. So insert a track, then we'll go to plugins up here, and search for uh, BBC, and up come BBC Symphony Orchestra, uh, double click on it, and it'll get instantly get inserted into the track which um, it's um, uh, is selected. I've obviously got BBC Pro coming up here, so let's switch to Discover. There we go. Let's go for a violin. Right, and then I simply go there, Command R for rename, and then go Violin 1 Long, okay, then, with that still selected, Command D for duplicate. Okay, then go into the instrument again, and then select another articulation, this time a short spiccato. And then go back in, Command R, and then call that violin one short. And that's what you do over and over again. And to group them, you just select all the strings. I'm imagining there's gonna be violin two, viola, all the rest of it. And then, couldn't be simpler, you just go Command G for group, and it instantly creates this. Now this is really clever, because what we've got is we've got 
all the string instruments and they all route through the output here of this master group. So if we select the master group and go Command R and then we just go string like that, this, look, all these instruments, their output goes to this one, which is string master. Now, <clears throat> once you've done all that, you want to create your stems, which are just going to be ordinary audio tracks. So there's an audio track. Oh no, I don't want to do it inside the, um, the folder. Um, so we create an audio track. There we go. And we'll call this one, um, uh, we're going to call it, uh, what are we going to call it? Oh yeah, string, stem, stem. Okay, string. Actually, I'm going to put two because I've already got one. Um, then you root the strings, here we go, to that, um, to the, so instead of master out there, which you can just see, can you see that? If you click down, you see all the, all the different audio tracks you can send. So there's the one we're gonna send it to, string, two string stem, there we go, like that. And now if I play the violin, you won't hear it. Why not? Because what you have to do with these stems is you see that little button there in, click that, and now you can hear it. And then you root all the stems, because now you've got to imagine there's woodwind, brass, and all the rest of it, into this one. And this one here is going to be called stereo, okay? Or again, I'm going to have to call it something else because I've already got one, so I'm going to call it two stereo or something like that. Twelve stereo even. So there we take that stem, we turn the in on there, and we, t we then root it into there we go. So then it goes all the way down. And so once I've recorded something into this, it'll bounce all the way down. So that is how the template's put together. And then we've got um, these reverbs down the bottom, um, which are um, set up to go into, so the woodwind reverb goes into the woodwind stem. Enough of all this. I think now what I want to do is just very quickly write something to show you how the process works. And at the same time, to show you uh, how bad I am at uh, Ableton Live, because I've only been doing it for a week or so. So, oh my goodness gracious me. But, you know, I'm confident this is going to be great. Trouble is, it's so dark, I can't see anything. So, sorry, sunglasses of doubt, they've got to come off. Right, here we go. Okay. Uh, start with a viola on a short. Right, what are we going to do? Um, I feel in an A minor sort of mood. Right. What we're doing, I like, I quite like that. Look, look okay, let me just play that in and see if it works. Oh, hang on. It's not going to work if you don't have the click on guy. Oh, that's really true. What kind of idiot are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a beginner. Right, all we've got going there is an inversion of A minor. There's A minor. Okay, A, C, E. So rather than having A at the bottom, we're putting the E at the bottom. And when you put the fifth at the bottom, it's called a second inversion. And then what do we do? We raise that E to that. And what's that? That's a chord of F major. So we're just going from A minor to F major, but we're doing it in a funky kind of way. Funky kind of way, yeah. Right, let's quantize these babies. Okay. Hello. Hello, guy. Be nice to me. There you go. Right, command U for quantize. Um, now, uh, what I tend to do... Uh, right, let's drag it to there. Now, we get that going. What's so that going to start on bar 11? Okay. And duplicate it. So we've got that going on for a little while. Um, let's have, in addition to that, a little... Funky cello. Not everything's funky, guy. Could you stop saying funky all the time? Okay. Well, it is funky. No, it's not. It's a cello. Well, cellos can be funky. I know. But, but you're playing it. Oh, true. Okay.
Okay. Oh, middle pop a chicka back bum. Actually, I did I did wipe at the very beginning. Doesn't matter um, because it was in loop mode. Uh, now I'm going to quantize this to eighths. Now it's not the worst thing actually that it uh, went over the beginning because what normally happens is if you play it over more than one repetition, the second repetition is better. So we're just going to get rid of that. Actually, I didn't even need to do that because it looks. Oh look, it's still there. It's still there. Who knew? Well, you do now, guy. Love that cross rhythm. Right, I'm gonna go with that. I like that. I like that because the top one is kind of nice and chuggy and the bottom one is a sort of cross rhythmy, interesting thing. Now I've got a pits here. Have you got it? Have you got a pits there? Yes, I have. Where is it? Come on, okay, there we go. Let's get it up. I don't suppose I've got any colenio in here. No, don't be silly. Okay, we'll just live with the pits. So I'm just going to reinforce. That is not a pits. Oh, that is. Right, but we're not going to bring it in on bar one. Oh no! That's my first rule of uh, writing music. Don't bring everything in at once. Okay. Right. Let's let it have a one. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay. Go you guy. Don't be ridiculous. Right. Okay. Do you know? Right, that's so far so good. Save your work, save your work, save your work. Okay, I will. Right, now let's have... Okay, into this downbeat of bar 15, we want a little intro. We need something which sort of brings it in. And I'm feeling harpy. Actually, tell you what, let me duplicate the harp because we're going to turn this into a harp gliss. Uh, what, harp gliss? Yeah, harp gliss. One of those. Okay, yeah, let's uh, go there. Now, if you want to do a harp gliss and you haven't got a recording of a harp gliss, um, you, all you have to do is run your fingers across the keyboard. And what you'll get is a gliss in either um, A minor um, uh, natural or, or the natural minor or C major. Now that might not be the key you want, but what you do is you play it in and then you transpose it to the key you want and it works really well. And transposing to interesting keys is something Ableton is extremely good at. And I'll show you how. Okay, here we go. Right, let's uh, rock and roll. And I don't care where I did that because I'm gonna bounce it to audio. And this is part two of my interesting things. Because what, okay. Calm down, guy. Um, when I first, when you first go onto a new um, door um, or piece of software, the f well, particularly door when you're moving from one to another, the first thing is you notice all the things it can't do because you're so used to it doing stuff from your last door. You go, why can't it do this? Like, bounce to audio. You know, why can't I just go select that and go blunk and it turns into a bit of audio? Not so simple, it turns out, in um, Ableton Live. So, my workaround with this is you uh, remember how I said everything goes from groups into stems into this stereo audio track. This is why this is a good idea. Oh, it's one of a number of reasons it's a good idea. Right, if we go, if we select that as a solo, okay, uh, we go down to the stereo audio track, that one there, and we record enable it. And I use my special recording finger to push the recording button. Oh, hang on, I've forgotten one crucial step. You remember I said that transposey thing? Right. Here's the cool bit. If you go up here and go to MIDI effects and go down to scale, 
This allows you to change uh, the MIDI to pretty much anything you want. Look, Locrian, you can, you can mess around three. I mean, what? All I want is something pretty simple. I want minor harmonic. Oh, minor Hungarian? No, I'm gonna go minor. Okay. And then you just drop it on the thing and it just does its punky, you know, its funky plug in -y thing. Uh, let's drop it on there. Ah, oh, there we go, that's better. Right, so what we got going on here, uh, minor harmonics. So now, if I play it back, there you go, you got a minor harmonic instead of the major one. How cool is that? Right, so let's get rid of that one and now we're gonna record it in. Then I'll show you where we put it. There you are. Right, good, right, now let's create uh, an audio track. Command T, if you can't be bothered to do that. Cut and paste that into there. Then take the, rename the audio as uh, Harp Gliss. Harp Gliss. And then move it up to the other bit of the harp so that they're all together as one happy family. And, oh, blimey, hang on, there we go. That's better. Oh, you can't even see that either. Here we go, right. Harp, Harp Gliss, Harp Gliss audio. There we are. Now, Look at this, as soon as I drop it in, it changes the outputy thing. How cool is that? That's really good. Well, I think it's really good, I don't know about you. Right, let's take the solos off now. Uh, where are we gonna stick this? I'm gonna stick this um, wherever the, let's see where we want this to. Let's uh, go back to the beginning and work out where this great moment is going to happen. Oh, leading into 17, isn't it? Here we go. Actually, 15. Leading into 15. So let's take this and put it in place. Now, it's snapping to grid at the moment. We don't want that. Command 4 to turn that off. Watch the bottom right-hand corner here. Off! There we go. Uh, let's now... Uh, Zoom in and out using the plus and minus key. Now you can line it up very accurately. So it goes, yeah. Do we think that looks all right? Yeah, that's a bit, a bit earlier, a bit earlier. Okay. Right, now we're gonna bring in some brass and we're gonna build a brass, um, uh, little section. Uh, let's go on to the French horns to start with. Okay. Uh, right, so what we're going to do with the brass, with our French horns long, we're going to do some inversion swapping. So rather than just stay in one inversion, root position first, then go, then change to the air. The idea is something like that. So watch my hands rather than the screen this time. Do you know what? This would have worked better if I turned the click on. Oh, do you think? Yeah, obviously. some special little notes in there, some special notes. Notes of which I'm particularly fond and proud. No, you're not. You're lying, guy, you're lying. It's true. Uh, actually, they're what's called cock-ups. Yeah. Uh, how do I get into this kind of weird? Oh yeah, there we go, right. So let's get rid of our, oh, what? I, oh no, hang on. This is bad, bad news. Because uh, what's gone on here? Ah! Okay. This is not good. I've now got a tool up and I don't know how to get rid of it. Uh, to, uh, I don't want the pencil cut. Th ah! This is, this is the most frustrating bit of uh, um, 
uh, learning a new door. Found it! <laughs> Just for reference. Do you see up here? See that little thing there? Click it, you get the drawery thing. Click it again, it turns it off. Uh, who knew? Well, lots of you did, obviously. Okay, so let's just get in here and sort out this nutcase, more horrible stuff going on. Okay, look, I could have just played in again, but at least I know that, you know, I've learned something new. And that is the frustrating bit of learning a new door. So welcome to my world. Right, okay, so let's get going with this again. Are we going to quantize it? Yeah, probably. Um, let's go into the loop mode and go. Now, um, what we want to happen here is we want it to grow in width as it gets bigger. So we're going to start with adding some um, trombone down the bottom. Okay, now when I say width, what I want to happen now is uh, to get some tuba. Where are you, tuba? There you go. Now, so we're going to add an, another octave underneath it when we get to the end bit. So we're going to go for these last two, we're going to go, we're going to put down a, an, an A and an F. Um, that works pretty well and um, because what we want now is to add something on the top as well so what you're getting is um, as the piece of music gets to its climax it's not just going and getting louder it's going like that so you get more top and more bottom uh, tried and tested technique works fine um, this definitely reminds me of something uh, so where are we going to start? Uh, let's go back to the beginning here. Okay, ready? Let's give it a go. Now we're not bringing the trumpet in. Not yet. Nearly there? Maybe. Okay. That works. Um, you could add woodwind and strings and all kinds of things onto the top of that. Um, but the last thing I want to do in this little instant um, how to write orchestral music in um, live thing is to add um, a bit of a kind of crescendo-y thing into that um, downbeat. So what we're going to do, well we're going to use the harp gliss again but we're going to get some percussion, we're going to do some more bouncing to disc here. We're going to get the percussion up. Uh, what I would like is a... Oh no, so, oh, select that, here we go. Oh, that's the one. That's the baby. Right, I'm going to record this in and then we're going to bounce it to audio and all that. See, I don't mind where it is because I'm placing the audio later. There we go, drag it out, solo it, go down to the uh, stereos down here, drop it into record, record it out. Let it run, let it run, let it run. There you go, right. Now we're going to add another Command T for another track. Uh, let's get that sorted out. Cut and paste. Uh, rename it. Gong. And then we're going to move the gong up to be with his friends. Oh, has he got friends? Yeah, he has. All the other percussions. Right, so, um, and the reason I'm doing this is because we want to build a kind of buildy thing into the, um, into the, into that sort of climax. 
and I'm going to actually going to duplicate it because I want one going forward and one going backwards. So now uh, running things backwards in live turns out to be absolutely the simplest thing in the world. Look, let's just get our friend up there. Um, in order to run him backwards, you select him and then you literally hit the um, R key on the keyboard and it does it. <laughs> How good is that? I think that's just wonderful. It makes me happy. Right, let's just work out, let's just remind ourselves, I should say, where the, uh, where the climax is going to be, and then we'll say, that's it. Oh, boom. Okay, 23, downbeat of 23. So let's take the uh, reversed one. Whoops, be careful, guy. Okay, which is the reversed one? That's the reversed one, into 23. And then use the front one, going that way. There we go. Uh, let's whack the volume up a bit on both of them. They look a bit on the side. Okay, let's... Uh... Okay, there we go. Right, let's see how this works. This is where live comes into its own, into the, in the audio stuff. Uh, oh, come on, here we go, that's better. Let's see how you do, fella. Boom, okay, that one needs to be a bit earlier. Right, okay. Very much earlier. Right, um, let's now add a couple of timpani and then I think we're there for today. Um, uh, oh, take off that. Uh, let's go back to the beginning of this little sequence. Uh, there we go, come on now. Pretend that was in time. And then we'll get rid of that gong there, and then we can have just one last thing. Yeah, bit of a bad, bit of a bad boy bass drum. You need a bad boy bass drum. I do need a bad boy bass drum. Right, and there. We have it. Well, have it? What do, do you really think that's it, guy? Yeah, I do. Right, let's just have a little performance. Actually, tell you what, we could record the whole thing. There we go. Um, so we can bounce the whole thing out. So let's go to the beginning. Uh, let's move into there. Give them a bit of run in. Give them a bit of run out. Okay, so how do you record multiple... Oh, like that. Hold down command. Right, and we're going to bounce all these stems out. Okay, ready? Just watch. This is very satisfying when, when this works. Here we go. I'll take myself out of the picture so you can see it all doing it. Here we go. There you go. And each one of those is now recorded. So you've got stems on each of these. There we go. Let's uh, expand them a bit. Look, there you go. So th there's all the woodwind brass and all the rest of it all recorded now. I like live. And this is before we even get into what live's supposed to be good at, or is good at, which is all the sort of drag and drop effects and all that stuff. I mean, what's not to like? So if you want to download this little project and the BBC Discover template for live, you know, it's there uh, and it's got reverbs and stems and all kinds of things and you can have a bit of a laugh because it sounds all right. 
And Dis BBC Discover is sort of Spitfire's gift to the world, or BBC's gift to the world as well, uh, in it's completely free. So enjoy. Look, I hope you've enjoyed this and you thought it was fun and uh, I've inspired you to, you know, um, take off your dancing shoes if you're an Ableton user and try and something a little bit more organic. Um, you know, because it, it's just a door and it just has different strengths and weaknesses, but it's really good fun and maybe you'll enjoy it. So that's it for today. If you enjoy this kind of thing, I wonder if you enjoyed one of our courses. Yes, because like things like how to write music, learn music theory, how to mix music. Mixing is our new one and we got all kinds of exciting things. You'd just love it. Go to thinkspaceeducation.com and take a look because we've got all this really cool interactive technology, interactive video, minus one things where you add bits to it. And there's a just amazing Discord community with lots of people in it all having a great time. Uh, and you're not there, you're missing out. Courses like this one. Hello everybody and welcome to Sampled Orchestration. Sampled orchestration is all about creating a realistic, engaging, lyrical, uplifting, emotional, musical experience. A piece of music that could be performed by an orchestra, but is actually coming out of sample programs on your computer. This course, we hope, will help you upgrade your sample orchestration skills so that your mock-ups will sound not just more real, but more emotive, that you'll have more control, you'll feel more satisfied with the music you produce, and that you're able to get the most out of the libraries you own. It didn't sound remotely real, and this is one of the best string libraries in the world. And now we'll go through and start working out how we can make this better. There's a lot of problems which you may well be familiar with, things like the machine gun effect, the pipe organ effect, lack of clarity in the inner voices, all kinds of things which samples just kind of, they suck at, to be honest. So we're going to be looking at these complicated problems to solve and helping you solve them. The quality of the legato sample really does, for a lot of people, define the quality of the library. You can hear it flowing much better when we use a legato sample, which is designed to sound like it's moving from one note to another, I would recommend putting a marker track in, putting each marker in with your chord so you can see where things change. Obviously, this course also comes with a community, so you can make friends with each other and you can share your music. The community exists on Discord. There's lots of opportunities to upload uh, your minus ones or any other bits of music you want to get feedback both from your fellow students and members of the teaching staff. I drop in there and give some feedback from time to time. How do you change articulations? One is using key switches. The other is articulation IDs or expression maps. Third method is using separate tracks for separate articulations. There. That is significantly better than it was before, and that's just using two articulations. And if you haven't checked it out yet, what are you doing? Go and check it out.